Welcome back to the studio here at Kuala Lumpur. We're talking the energy transition in Southeast Asia. Yatin, sometimes the tech is there, but the implementation is a, a step behind. How do we fix that? So a lot of it has to do typically with, with, with regulation and the state of regulation uh, and the awareness of both the regulators as well as the finances of, of how to de-risk these investments and looking at business models and on actually uh, making these projects viable in different environments. Uh, that doesn't mean that the technology is, is not sound. Uh, the technology is already here, it's already proven. And I think Ville actually can touch a little bit more on that. Yeah, and uh, I can mention maybe about specifically Philippines. Uh, luckily, the financing is there. Uh, local players are more than hungry to look at the new technologies, which, by the way, provide already the cheapest power today. But uh, unfortunately, the regulation is still lacking a little bit behind because it's not moving that quickly uh, how the technology is moving. So I think that's something uh, which uh, you certainly are already working on and supporting. The, the panel discussion that you were just on, yeah. there was a hot debate about what is actually the, the cheapest source of energy. How do we change perceptions? So there's, there's this perception that FITs are, the, are sort of the holy grail for renewables. And, and that, that actually isn't quite true, especially if you look at the, the hidden subsidies that are already backing up uh, convention. They've sort of been forgotten along, along the way. Uh, and the fact is that there is subsidy in play even for convention uh, higher up the, the value chain. Now, if we start looking at that with respect to policy and regulation, you know, and giving some indicators of uh, stability and change and migration of mindsets and, and, and an evolution of policy to shift that existing hidden subsidy, if you will, uh, to more cleaner uh, options for, for energy access and utilization, i.e. distributed uh, power, uh, clean up power, etc. I think that that will actually unlock quite a lot of uh, financing that could go into uh, distributed generation. But the other side is actually getting the financiers on board as well to understand that that these aren't risky investments and that policy and regulation is evolving to de-risk the uh, the amount of, of cash that flows into these kinds of projects in so a viable sense. It's all about getting that business model correct. Well, that's, that's a very large part of it, but there's policy and regulation that plays a, a very strong role uh, in, in enabling, uh, or at least providing an enabling uh, environment. And uh, of course, we are in the region where the load is growing uh, and uh, yeah. the base load is there. So now, basically, we should look at that, what built next. And uh, it doesn't make sense anymore to stay in the old days because the renewables are cheap already today. They are the cheapest source of power, of course, when you implement more renewables, it costs a little bit more challenging uh, to how to balance the system. When, but there is technologies for that as well. You have energy storage, you have uh, LNG around the region almost in each and every country, and you can uh, do some uh, bigger gas uh, to balance these renewables. The future is what we're all talking about. What do you see as the big changes in the energy landscape in the region in the next three to five years? Well, there is a, a huge transition through both socioeconomic pressure and climate change on, on moving away from coal. Uh, I, I think the forecast still is looking at, at uh, sort of peak coal in the, in, in the 2030s, you know, and, and its decline around then, and then looking at obviously the longer term horizon of, of, uh, of gas as, uh, as the, the base load. Um, now, having said that, that's, um, I think the importance here is, is looking at how today's technologies that are already proven with respect to clean tech are displacing uh, the convention, right? Uh, and these, again, coming back to de-risking, is the, the movement, if you will, or the, the transition in the shift uh, that we should be looking at, at rather than uh, hearsay oh, this doesn't work and it might not work and because our conditions are different. Actually, conditions are, are very similar across the planet around different geographies, right? Uh, it's the political environments that change and create the risk. So I think we need to be cognizant of, of the speed of change and adoption is, is very much linked to the will uh, with respect to the countries that might want to uh, look at, at, at bringing on and de-risking uh, investment into distributed energy, if, if you will, or, or renewables. 
Yeah, I, I hope that we are pretty close to peaking on uh, fossil fuels. Uh, I think change should happen already today, but uh, more realistically, I think it might take a few years more to really understand uh, what these new technologies are bringing in in the power systems. But uh, we are really close in the major change, in, and it, it's happening also in uh, ASEAN countries. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 I'd say it's within the next decade you'll see, you'll see a major shift taking place globally. Thank you so much for your insights. Thank you. Be sure to subscribe to our channels for more industry-related content.